Hello, everyone. If you like what I'm doing here, please consider subscribing, liking, and commenting. It would really help the channel out quite a bit. Thank you very much. Welcome to the Caltech Theatre. A full hour of dramatic entertainment broadcast over a nationwide network of stations throughout Australia. The Caltex Theatre is brought to you by Caltex Oil, marketers of over a thousand outstanding petroleum products in association with Caltex dealers and distributors everywhere. Tonight, the Caltex Theatre presents Detectives Are Not Always Right, an outstanding new mystery drama by George Batson. On the Hudson River, not far from New York, stands a century-old mansion, once the home of wealthy landowners and the scene of gay parties, now the setting for murder. In the starring role, you will hear Queenie Ashton, your producer, E. Mason Wood. <laughs> It has been said that all motor spirits are much the same. True, they all consist essentially of hydrogen and carbon and are known technically as the hydrocarbon compound of petroleum. But there ends all similarity. Super Caltex with ICC and detergent action compound has been proved today as outstandingly superior gasoline. It has been proved in laboratory tests, field tests and by motorists like yourself in everyday use. Super Caltex gives power, acceleration, pull and performance that you must experience to believe. What's more, there's a mileage bonus in every gallon. Take it from me, all motor spirits are not the same. Exclusive refining and blending processes combined with specialized scientific research have enabled Caltex to produce a vastly superior gasoline. Super Caltex, the guaranteed top octane gasoline. For the best of motoring and the best of gasoline, fill your tank at a Caltex dealer. The Caltex Theatre presents Detectives Are Not Always Right, Act One. Why, Louisa, missing the last dance? Oh, Martha, I simply had to steal away. My feet, my dear. All those dances with David's future father-in-law. I laughed at all his jokes and spent the entire evening talking nothing but tobacco. I'm sure he loved that, especially since he's in textiles. Oh. Oh, well, does it matter? They're both so southern. Eunice is most attractive, don't you think? Yes, dear, she is. Laugh. Celia has handled the evening magnificently, don't you think? She always does. She adores to entertain, to play queen of our little set. The decaying Dutch aristocrats of the Hudson. Uh, Martha, you don't think it could be a question of Mr. Kilburn's financial status, this engagement, I mean. You know, it must be so difficult for dear Celia, the carrying on of this enormous old house. Oh, here you are. Your car's outside, Louisa. Oh, thank you, David. Oh, dear. Now, where are my shoes? How about a brandy? <laughs> Why not? Louisa? Uh, no, dear, no, no, thank you. I swear from now on I shall always buy my right size in shoes. Well, I mustn't keep that driver waiting. I'll get my things. David, is anything wrong? Wrong? No, no, I... I'm just on edge. Well, I'd better get my wrap. And as host, shouldn't you be helping your mother with any straggling guests? Suppose I should. But they're all so dreary. <laughs> Come along, dear. I'm sorry, Aunt Martha. I've no patience with them.
Hello? Give me 047, please. No? Okay, thanks. Join me in a drink, Kathy. Well, and may I ask when the Grangers asked their chauffeur to the party? None of your business. Uh, damn. One of the young masters painting. <laughs> Leave that alone. Well, by all that's... This is you. Put it down, I tell you. It sure looks as though his nibs got to first base. That's not true. I, I only <laughs> posed for the face. I'll bet his mother doesn't know about this. Oh. So this is why you've been so busy nights. Wasn't that the in that way when you first came here to work? What if I did pose for it? Kathy, have a little ride later. It's been a long time. I'm suddenly aware... No, I don't think so. In the first place, you've been drinking. What's the second place? You've got a date? What if I have? Come on. This shindig's breaking up. Well, I, I won't stay late. We'll decide about that later. And for your information, I'm only going with you because somebody needs a lesson. One of those yokels from the village, you're wasting your time. Oh, no, I'm not. Don't worry about me. I've got my plans. I'll be over in the garage waiting. Maybe I'll come. You'd better, gorgeous. There's some lost time I've got to make up. Hello? 047, please. Okay, thanks. You'll learn. Oh, Mr. David. Hello, Kathy. Did you enjoy your party, Mr. David? The Spencers and Mrs. Cortland and the Pettigrews? <laughs> God forbid. Your fiance is awfully pretty. Think so? Of course, a girl like that could get any person she wanted. Mr. David, about the picture, my portrait. It gave me an awful joke just being left there like that. I'll finish it soon, then you can have it. You're a lovely model, Kathy. You're really so talented. It seems a shame you can't paint for a living. It take years of study. Anyway, plans have been made. I'm going to be a big textile merchant down where the mint juleps grow. You don't have many young friends, do you? Don't forget I've had to take things easy because of my health. At least mother thought so. My young friends have drifted away. It takes young people to understand each other. Kathy... How about going out with me later? But I... I need to talk to someone. Just as you said, someone young. Pardon me, David. Uh, oh, yes, I'm Martha. My evening, Beth. Oh, yes, here it is. <laughs> I keep leaving it everywhere. Do you suppose she heard? Doesn't matter if she did, not Aunt Martha. But if your mother... Please meet me later, Kathy. Let's say in half an hour. I'll meet you in the garage. Oh, no. No, not the garage. Uh, suppose you pick me up just on the other side of the gate. I'll see your headlights. Thank you, Kathy. Thanks so much. Kathy? Uh, yes, Mrs. Granger? Will you see where Mrs. Hampton is? She's not in the kitchen. I've rung her room. Oh, yes, Mrs. Granger. Right away. David, don't you feel well? Oh, just another of those sudden headaches. Oh, you haven't had one for so long. Dr. Pease has thought you look so well tonight. It isn't too bad, Celia. I think I might go out for some fresh air. Well, too much excitement, that's what it is. But I think it's been a most successful evening. Well, I must say I'm glad I won't be seeing too much of Mr. Kilburn. That pleasure is reserved for me. Well, dear, you would go and fall in love with his daughter. Celia, I'd like to talk well, about that. Well, I... I'm finally ready to go. Oh, David, I'm thrilled about your engagement. But the thought just struck me. When you go off to the south, poor Celia will be all alone in this great barn of a house. Can you imagine Mother anywhere else? Uh, no. Oh, why should I? It's her home. And the memories. Celia, tonight it was like the old days. I kept remembering your engagement party. Watching David tonight, I had to convince myself that it wasn't years ago and he wasn't Bart. He is so like his father, isn't he? Yes, Louisa. Very much like him. And to think that the poor boy wasn't much older than David when he was... Uh, when he died. Is Louisa being morbid? Oh, I mustn't be musty on such a joyous occasion. And I, I mustn't keep my driver waiting any longer. Martha, dear, would you like a lift? Oh, uh, no, no, thanks. I have my car. Very well. Thank you, Cedar, David. Don't bother to show me out. I'll see you again soon, darling. <sighs> Now, David, Louisa's all right. She's a museum piece like them all. 
Oh, Aunt Martha, this archaic little circle. <laughs> and Celia's become as buried as the rest of them. Oh, David, dear, not tonight. I'm so awfully tired. How can this place, these people, mean so much to you? How can you stay in this mausoleum year after year? I like these people. They're my people. I love it here where I was so happy with your father. Perhaps you're not so much like him after all. Well, you'd understand. You know what I think, Celia? Because this place was Bart's life, you've taken a stand like the last of the Mohicans. My girl, you've got the darndest skill complex. Well, at least this analysis is free. <laughs> well, maybe it's a brandy. But when I think of the gay alive, Celia Brunswick, just look at her now. Content with the garden, her Dresdens, and her memories. Every night, climbing up on the ladder to Bart's portrait and polishing his invisible halo. Yes, dear. It's the brandy. I remember when we made our debut together. But she was always a glamorous one, David. That there's one thing I beat her at. I've had three husbands and got rid of a lot. Although why you never married again, Celia, I... Because I've never met another man like Bart. Oh, well, it's time for me to go. It's very black out, Martha. You know your eyesight. You ought to stop being vain and wear glasses. Oh, don't be silly. I read somewhere that short-sightedness gives you sex appeal. Oh, we'd better have Marino drive you home in our car. Oh, again? I've borrowed him so much lately, the handsome book will think he's working for me. Well, I'm sure you'll find it more lively. Come along. We'll go and tell him he's driving you home. Oh, I'm glad they've all gone. I think I'll go to bed. You do look tired, darling. I'd forget about that fresh air. You coming up, Celia? In a minute. I'll look in on you later. No, don't bother. I mean... If I do get to sleep, you might wake me. Good night, Celia. Good night, dear. Good night. <sighs> Mrs. Granger. Yes, Kathy. Oh, what about Mrs. Hamilton? She's had an accident. She fell or something and hurt her arm. She says she'll be all right if she can just rest. No. It's not serious. She said not to worry. Will that be all, Mrs. Granger? No. As a matter of fact, it isn't. Kathy, I've been thinking this can't be a very pleasant job for you. You're so far away from things up here on the river. It doesn't seem fair to a girl as young as you. Oh, I find lots to do, Mrs. Granger. I'm sure you do. I'm also sure you'd be much happier working somewhere else. But I... I've decided I'd prefer an older woman, one who wasn't so obviously restless. I'm a little too young and pretty, isn't that it? Your looks have nothing to do with it. I'd prefer an older woman, that's all. Sure, one Mr. David won't be making up to. You think your son won't marry Miss Kilburn if there are other complications. Well, he's not so hot for the idea anyway. I'll give you two weeks' wages and you will leave tomorrow, Cathy. Okay, if that's the way you want it. But what's to prevent me from still seeing your son? What's to prevent me from seeing a lot of him? Because he sure likes to see me. Will you please leave this room? You're not risking anything that would interfere with your setup, are you? Because the Kilburns are rich and the Grangers are broke. That's why you're marrying your son off. Everybody knows it. But the Kilburns don't. Not yet. I had no idea you were mentally ill. When you leave tomorrow, I suggest you consult a physician. Good night. Maybe I've already seen a doctor. <laughs> Oh, thank heaven you've got over here at last. The detective's been at me. Mrs. Hamilton, he's been saying, where's Marino? Where's the chauffeur? I had to get dressed, didn't I? I still can't believe it. That poor, poor kid. It's horrible. Oh, what a morning to wake up to. Relax, will you? She's dead and there's nothing you can do about it. Oh, where were you last night? Wherever it was, don't you wish you'd been along? <gasps> what are you crying about? You didn't like Kathy. I could hear you rowing clear over to the garage last night. It wasn't a row. I, I scolded her for not drying the glasses properly, that's all. Well, last night was your night for picking fights, wasn't it? You've got a sore arm to show for it. You shouldn't have done it, Earl. You almost broke my wrist. Well, you should know better than to pick on me when I'm drinking. Anyone would think we were married. Oh, you... You don't know anything about it. What do you mean? No, oh, she'd tell me how you pester her. She said you kept after all the time. She didn't tell you I pestered her last night, did she? No. Then she... remember that if the cops ask you. Do you think for one minute I'd do anything to hurt you? In spite of the way you've treated me since she's been here. What's the detective like? Oh, it seems all right. It's not the kind you see in the movies, I mean. 
doesn't keep his hat on. He doesn't smoke cigars. I don't wear a hat, Mrs. Hamilton, and I smoke cigarettes. But only when I'm bothered about something. You're Marino. That's right. I'm Carlton, County Homicide. Uh, Mrs. Granger will be down shortly, Mrs. Hamilton? Yes, sir. She said right away. She said she'd call Mr. Granger. It was you that Mr. McWatters awoke, wasn't it, Mrs. Hamilton? Isn't that what you told me earlier? Yes. When he was delivering the milk about 5.30, I heard him banging on the door. He said she was lying in a heap, down by the gate, all smashed. I went to Mrs. Granger's room. She wasn't asleep, so I just knocked lightly. How did you know she wasn't asleep? Her light was on. I could see it under the door. You heard nothing at all during the night? Well... Go on. About 11.30, I did hear a car going out of the garage. That was me. Did you hear a car come back, Mrs. Hamilton? No. When I got to sleep, I slept soundly. Did Miss... uh, uh, Yes, Miss Moore... Uh, did she have many friends, in particular men friends? I don't think so. I don't think any particular one. Nobody in the village? Well, she did go out a couple of times with someone, but she didn't tell me who he was. Any idea where he lived or where he worked? No. And if ever she telephoned him or anybody else and I was around, she'd come in here and use this phone. Even though Mrs. Granger wouldn't have liked it. Once I picked up the extension by mistake and heard her talking real sweet to someone. But you didn't hear any name? No, no, I hung up right away. But I knew she was talking to a man. Well, that'll be all for now, Mrs. Hamilton. Thank you, sir. You went out about 11.30, Marino. Yes, I drove Mrs. Brand home. She was afraid of that fog. And you came back here? No. You see, I ran out of liquor. I know of a place in Kingsville where I can get it. We'll have to know where you were. What time did you get back? I'd say about four. You didn't see Miss Moore... No, but I wouldn't have. It was pitch black. Had you ever gone out with Miss Moore? No, never. You see, I got a girl in the village. And you were with her last night? Yeah, sure. What's her name? Rose Coonan, 68 Mill Street. All right, Marino. That's all for now. Thanks. Uh, Don't leave the place for a while. Don't leave. Okay. Oh, a photograph. Celia Granger. Good morning. Oh. oh. Good morning, Mrs. Granger. I'm Dan Carlin, County Homicide. This has been a dreadful shock. You're sure it was murder? Sure. I thought perhaps a hit and run driver. But well, she was inside the gate, and her head had been struck with a rock. She also had this scarf wrapped around her throat. Uh, Mrs. Hamilton said it had been yours. Yes. I gave it to Kathy. You, uh, you don't remember me, do you, Mrs. Granger? Remember? No, I, I'm afraid I don't. Uh, no, of course you wouldn't. It goes back many years. Back to the days when you were living in the old house on King's Point. You, uh, you used to borrow my bicycle. Then you were... Yes, I was the grocer's delivery boy after school. Why, yes, I do recall, but I saw you very seldom. I got a better job with a tailor. I don't know why I'm bringing this up. Let's get back to business. You were looking at my photograph when I came in, weren't you? Uh, Yes. uh, Yes, I was. Celia? Oh, come in, dear. David, this is Mr. Carlin. He's from the police. My son, David. Oh. How do you do? I need a shot of brandy. (laughs) Don't get the idea that I start every day this way. This is an unusual day, I'm sure, for all of us. Mr. Granger... Did you know about any plans Miss Moore might have had for last night, for after the party? I? No. What makes you ask that? I thought possibly she might have said something. She never confided in me about her dates. I did come in here while she was tidying up. That was all. And that was the last you saw of her? Yes. Very well. Now I must be getting back to the village. I want to check the coroner's report. I'm afraid I'll be a bit of a nuisance around here for the next few days, but uh, there's nothing I can do about it. I regret the circumstances, but I have been glad to see you again. Thank you, Mrs. Granger. Uh, Goodbye, Mr. Granger. Goodbye. He's hardly what you'd expect a hick detective to be. But there were moments when he was still the grocer's boy. The what? When I was a little girl, I used to get anonymous valentines, all lace and hearts, and 
Now, after all these years, I think I know who sent them. You mean... I wonder if he's still sentimental. <laughs> Seems so quixotic in a detective. Oh, David, I take it easy. Brandy isn't the best thing for your heart. I've got to get through this day somehow. Oh, you can't let this upset you so. It, it, it's frightful, of course, but... Oh, thank heavens it wasn't one of us. Don't you mean, thank heaven it's Cathy? David, you'd never gone out with her. No. Why? You did say you might go out for some air. You could have seen her I didn't go out. No, Celia, I wasn't carrying on with Cathy. Of course, she did pose for this portrait. <gasps> oh, David. She, she only posed for the head. You see, it's a, a copy of a, a Renoir nude. Has anybody else seen it? Eunice saw it last night. And Eunice believed Cathy had posed only for the head. Why not? It's the truth. Darling, you're about to marry an exceedingly trusting girl. Let's forget about it. Nobody else has seen it, so how can it possibly matter? Since nobody else has seen it, it won't matter. Now, let's attend to the newspaper men. They're waiting outside. Will you go and show them in? Yes, of course. No. Nobody will ever see it. Never, never, never. How fortunate that it's winter. It burns quite quickly. So you're the girl from Miss Hopper's employment agency? Yes. Nora Taylor's my name. I have the introduction here. Yes, I can't please. understand, Miss Harper. I told her I wanted an older woman. I have some excellent references. Oh, it isn't that. I, I don't believe you'd like it here. You're young. You're pretty. You'd find it much too quiet. All the others have. But I like the quiet. You don't know the trouble of breaking in a girl and then having her leave. But I won't leave. Just because you're last Did girl. Did Miss Harper tell you about the last girl? No. The last girl was found murdered two days ago. Just inside the front gate. A murderer hasn't been caught. There's a great deal of uneasiness in the village. Those things don't happen twice, Mrs. Granger. Anyway, I, I'm not afraid. You don't seem the servant type, Miss Taylor. Won't you at least see my references? I, I'm sure they're excellent, but... Uh, no. Marino will drive you back to the station. There's a train soon. Naturally, I shall insist upon paying for your tickets. Oh, David, this is Miss Taylor. Oh? She was sent by Miss Harper. That was quick. How do you do? This is my son. How do you do, Mr. Granger? Then if you've decided, Mrs. Granger, I'd better go back to the station. Uh, go back? I've explained to Miss Taylor that I want someone older. Why do we have to have someone older? Because the young girls never stay. How do you feel, Miss Taylor? Think you'd like it here? I feel certain I would, Mr. Granger. Oh. Couldn't we let her find out for herself? She has come quite a distance. If only you'd give me a trial, Mrs. Granger. Oh, it's not right appealing to your sympathy, but I do need a job so badly. Ah, there's a storm coming. We can't send you back in that. What do you say, Celia, eh? Any reason why we shouldn't give her a trial? But, David, After I... all, we do need someone. Very well, Nora. We'll give you a trial for a few days, anyway. I'll ring for Mrs. Hamilton and have her show you to your room. She'll explain your duties. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Granger. You're very welcome. Yes, Mrs. Granger? Oh, Mrs. Hamilton, Nora is staying for the time being. Will you show her to her room? Yes. Yes, certainly, Mrs. Granger. Just follow me. Thank you. I've quite made up my mind it would be the best not to keep her. Because she is attractive. I, I want to avoid any repetition of the painting episode. There won't be, Celia. I promise you. Thank you, David. Celia, I want to talk to you about something. It, it's about Eunice. Well? I'm beginning to realize what life with her and her father will be like. Awfully comfortable and secure. Mother, you, you might as well know. I've decided not to marry her. Brought on this sudden change of heart? This thing that's happened. 
It shot some sense into me, cleared my vision. I, I, I just can't go through with it. I must have been out of my head. Of course, if you feel that way, there's nothing more to be said. Except that if I marry Eunice, we'll have enough money to keep this place, won't we? With me, a textile executive. Oh, don't be ridiculous. That doesn't enter into it, and you know it. But we are broke, aren't we? Yes. And we would be able to keep this place. Yes. You feel you have quite an obligation to all this, don't you, Celia? Yes, David, I do. Because of your father. This house represents him, his tradition. To me, it's a trust. That's why I've struggled so to keep it. And since his death, my first obligation has been to you. That's how I've justified everything I've done. Your happiness, your well-being come first. Am I wrong or strange wanting that? No, you're right, Celia. This is just nerves. Of course I want to marry Eunice. Besides, <laughs> who else is there to marry? She loves you, David, and you're not strong. She'll look after you. You'll be set for the rest of your life. I wish I could be allowed to look after myself, and I wish I could plan my own life, and I wish that I could... <sighs> Sorry, Celia. He's... Nerves again. Well, I'll, I'll go and write to her. Oh, by the way, um, have you seen that painting of Kathy? Yes, I have. I destroyed it. Oh. You do understand. Because of its implications, Colin had the thought... That Kathy and I were having an affair and for some reason I killed her? David, did you know Kathy was expecting a child? No. Carlin told me. They found out when they performed the autopsy. So I think it's just as well, dear, that I did destroy the painting. Dear Celia, you're right. You usually are. What is it, Marino? I told you we were free for the evening. That's right, Mrs. Granger. But then the question always comes up, what to do on a free evening? Well, what do you want? You know, you're a proud woman, Mrs. Granger. I think I read somewhere that could be a weakness. You're a good-looking dame, too. Get out of this room at once. Real shame you shut yourself off like this. You're through at the end of this week. Oh, no, I'm not. You see, I've got something to sell you. Sell me? Yeah, it's about that painting. The one of Kathy. You know, the one your son did. You want to sell me that painting? Now, how could I do that, Mrs. Granger, when you've destroyed it? Don't forget, I do a lot of work in the garden. I can see right in here. Yeah, your son will have to explain an awful lot if the police hear about it. That painting was done from imagination. But who's going to believe that? Besides, he and Kathy have been out several times. He was waiting for her just outside the gate the night she was killed. You didn't know that, did you? I saw her get into his car. I... I don't believe She you. stood me up. She was going out with him instead. And with a girl like Kathy, why should the picture be from imagination? She was awfully uh, available, if you know what I mean. And then, too, you're destroying it. You'd have to explain that. The picture has been destroyed. We can deny there ever was any picture. The picture was partly destroyed. It wasn't burnt entirely. What? Don't forget, I also empty the fireplaces. That part's what I got to sell you. How much do you want? Well, knowing you're kind of strapped right now, I'll be sensible. Suppose we start at, uh, say, 250. All right. As long as you leave here at once. Oh, I'm not going anywhere. I like it here. I like you, too. And now that we're sharing a secret, maybe we'll get better acquainted. <coughs> I shouldn't have done that. It puts me on your level. Make it cash. 
I'll be seeing you around. Afternoon, Mr. Granger. Celia, what did he want? He was making a clumsy attempt at blackmail. What? What? I'll go out there no, and I'll... David. It should be very easy to cope with Mr. Marino. And so the curtain falls on Act One of tonight's play, Detectives Are Not Always Right, presented for your entertainment by Caltex Oil. In a moment, we commence Act Two. It's double checked for your protection. Yes, Marfax chassis lubrication is double-checked to ensure that every lubrication point is thoroughly serviced with the correct type and grade of lubricant. Marfax service is carried out in accordance with a special lubrication chart of your particular make and model of car. A chart that not only specifies lubricants in accordance with car manufacturer's recommendations, but shows quite clearly all the points that must be serviced at a thousand miles, two thousand miles, or at any other stage. Marfax service, exclusive to Caltex dealers, will protect your car wherever your holiday tours or picnic trips may take you. Marfax lubricants ensure double the mileage of an ordinary greasing job. For smoother riding and greater peace of mind, check your car in at a Caltex dealer. The Caltex Theatre now presents Queenie Ashton in Detectives Are Not Always Right, Act Two. Come inside, Martha. It's getting too cold for the garden. Well, now you can put those evil-looking things down. What? <laughs> There she is. Celia, that new maid of yours, you think that's wise? Nora. She's awfully pretty, isn't she, bait for the killer? I feel certain the killer has picked up his tent and moved away. I saw David with her as I arrived today. Really? Incidentally, your mail hadn't been picked up from the post office. Oh, thank you. Reno should have gone in for it. I'll glance through it if you don't mind. Mm-hmm. That Carlin man came around this afternoon. I suspected you had something to tell me. Well, the questions he asked, I didn't like it. it seems to be prying. I tried to get angry, but he is so unreasonably attractive. And it is his job asking questions. Except that some of them had no bearing on the crime. I mean, what business is of his whether or not there have been any men in your life since Bart? Oh. You know, the poor devil has the most awful crush on you. What else did he ask? Why do you leave this quiet life? Why do people so seldom see you? I said you were still brooding over Bart's death, still in love with him for all I knew. I also said that you blame yourself for his death, and since you were so full of worship for his ancestors in this house, you felt you were making it up to him. And he knew about your singing in that club. I should have told him the only reason you were doing that was because the Granger Castle was dropping down around your heads and that your husband was too proud to go to work. Bart had no preparation. The stock market crash in 29 knocked his world from under him. He was a very young man. He could have how different he was from other men. Well, more handsome, perhaps. If you can afford well-dressed grasshoppers. <laughs> That's right, Martha. You did find him very handsome, didn't you? And you could have afforded him. See the shame. See, there, I didn't have a chance with you around. Well, I mean, all of us had a crush on him in these in those days. And all of us knew when he married, it would be you. Well, at least the others have forgiven me. What else didn't you tell, Mr. Carlin? Oh, not a thing about David. He beat about the bush, but I knew what he was driving at. You might tell me. Why was he a chaser after women, of course? I told him I'd never had an occasion to find out. After all, the boy called me Aunt Martha. 
What he really was driving at was, were David and Kathy friends? Wasn't that it? In general. And I kept remembering that Bart had the dirt of a temper. David could have inherited... There's nothing unusual about David's temper. Those headaches, what about them? He hasn't had one in months. What course? Of... Nerves. Lately, I've begun to realize that they were probably brought on by his resentment of this place. No, I'm sorry, Celia. I shouldn't talk like this. I'm just so rattled since this thing happened, and I can't forget that David did ask Cassie to go out with him that night. What night? The night she was good. I've forgotten my evening bag. I came in to get it, and they were making plans. Well, you, you must be mistaken. Well, I heard them, I tell you. Oh, I won't tell Carly. What difference does it make? She was very pretty. He's only human. Well, Sidney, what is it you're as white as she? I'm all right. Just this, this whole business has been such a strain. I took it for granted he hadn't kept the debt. I mean, he didn't go anywhere with her, did he? I don't see how he could have. David and I were talking in here until half past two that night. Then I looked in on him a little later and he was fast asleep. Well, that would seem to take care of that. Wouldn't it? I told you the truth about that night, about Kathy. You said you didn't leave the house that night. I didn't. Nor do I have to repeat and repeat. If Colin thinks I did it, why doesn't he come right out and arrest me? Oh, it's suddenly very cold in here. Celia, you don't think I killed Kathy, do you? Why, how extraordinary. This letter, I... I can't make it out. Oh, what is it? It's from the Harper Employment Agency. It says... They regret being unable to find a suitable servant immediately that will notify me as soon as they do. What? Oh, I don't get it. Laura said they'd sent her. Didn't she have a slip from them? As a matter of fact, she didn't show me anything. Yes, she said she had the introduction someplace, and I, I told her not to trouble. David, who do you think did send her? Don't you think maybe your friend Carlin? A girl like that? The, the police? Of course a girl like that. Complete with sob story to throw us off the track. I'm going to call her in here and demand the truth. No. No, perhaps that wouldn't be wise. Especially if you're right. Things have got to go on as if, as if we didn't know. She's got to see that we have nothing to hide. At least until we do find out why she's here. Again, you're right, Celia. I won't let on. Oh, here's Mr. Carlin. Come in, Mr. Carlin. Hello, Mr. Granger. Oh, hello. Excuse me, I'll, uh... I'll put these shears away, Mother. He means a lot to you, doesn't he? Of course. Because of your husband, maybe? Mrs. Brand said you had some notion that you were responsible for your husband's death. Yes, I'm sure she did. Uh, but she didn't tell me why. That surprises me. Oh, it's no great mystery. You see, Bart and I had lost nearly everything. I was trying to help. I had one asset, social position. Meant a lot in those days. I endorsed cold cream, cigarettes. Finally, even sang the nightclub. Bart resented all these things. Seemed almost jealous of them. The night he was killed, we'd had a quarrel, a violent quarrel. Saying ugly things, hurting each other the way you can hurt only someone you love. I should never have gone to New York that night. Why do you say that? He was feeding in to find me when it happened. We never could be angry with each other for long. When I finally saw him, it, it was as though he'd been hanging on until I could get there. But he managed to look up at me and whisper that he was sorry. That he loved me. Oh, I wish I had that night to live over. No matter where he was going, it was an accident. The car overturned. I've told myself that a hundred times. It can't wipe out the memory. You need someone else to tell you. To make you forget. Oh, well. Things have a way of working themselves out. Oh, no, Mrs. Granger. We've got to work things out ourselves. I'm sorry. Where do I get my nerve telling people how to run their lives? 
Anyway, that isn't why I'm here. It's about your chauffeur, Marino. Marino? Yes, I sent for you about Marino. I think he's our man. Some things have turned up. He has a prison record, number one. He served time for assault, a girl. Lately, he's been going with a woman in the village. She's broken with him because he's beaten her up a few times. She was his alibi the night of the murder. Was his alibi? She's changed her tune. She now says she didn't see him at all that night. I sent for you because he's been threatening me. Vague, absurd threats. He said he'd make trouble for David and me. I don't know what he planned to do. Then... Then he tried to make love to me. You should have sent for me immediately. Where is he now? I sent him into the village just a few moments ago. Well, we'll pick him up, so there's no need to worry. You've been very kind. If this does close the case, I... I want you to know how much I've appreciated your consideration. Well, just... Uh, just routine, Mrs. Granger. And I want you to know that... Regardless of the grim circumstances, how pleasant it's been meeting you again. You did mean it when you said you remembered me. How could I forget? Bicycle rides were a great event. I'm a little sorry without Brenda. Not half so sorry as I am. It's not fair. I get the impression you know so much about me, and I know nothing at all about you. Oh, me? I'm just the guy from the other side of the tracks, 30 years later. There's more to you than that, Mr. Dan Carlin. Maybe it's my determination to cross those tracks the quickest way. Oh, no comfortable in-between spot will do. I want the heights. Up here with people like you. All or nothing. I, I've got a, a wall to knock down. A wall? There's always been a wall between me and the things I've wanted. Mr. Carlin, you've never married. No. Don't women fit into this plan of yours? Oh, there have been women, but not the woman. You see, I've got my eye on the heights there, too. Well, I'd better be running along. Goodbye, then. It's funny how things turn out. Years ago, I used to think of you as the princess in the tower, and I was your knight, hell-bent on saving you from wicked old King John. <laughs> oh, damn it, I suppose you've got to be told sooner or later... I used to send you valentines. Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye, Dan Carlin. Pardon me, Mrs. Granger. Yes, Mrs. Hamilton. What time shall we be having dinner? Oh, about seven, I think. Very well, ma'am. Uh, tell me, how is Nora working out? So far, I've got no complaints. And she's not sneaking in here to the phone all the time. But, yes, what is it? It's Marino. You know how he gets with all of them. The pretty ones, anyway. I was thinking maybe if this time you warned him ahead of time, well, maybe he'd leave this one alone. Don't worry about Marino, Mrs. Hamilton. I don't believe any of us will be having any more trouble with him. <laughs> What do you want, Marino? I... 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 What's the matter, man? I... What do you want? Back. My back. What? Uh... I... <gasps> oh, the shears. In his back. The shears. Darling, I thought you were going to get some sleep. How do you expect me to sleep or rest? I know it's more than 24 hours since Marino. Have you seen what the papers are saying about us tonight? Poor Dan Carl, and according to them, I've either bought him off or bewildered him with my particular sorcery. It's a good thing nobody knows Marino was trying to blackmail us. Carlin does. I told him yesterday afternoon. Why did you do that? I had to. He was going to arrest Marino. I knew he'd talk. I had to protect you. That's all you ever think of, protecting me? Celia, there's something I'm going to tell you. Is there, David? Kathy and I did go out that night. 
I realized what a mistake it was to marry Eunice. I had to talk to someone who was sympathetic, who'd listen and understand. That's where I let you down, isn't it? It isn't your fault, Celia. You don't have to tell this at the inquest. Nobody saw you. Marino said he did, but he can't do any harm. Somebody did see us. Someone else. <gasps> David! It was almost three when Kathy and I got back. Before we came to the gate, my lights picked up the outline of a car. Parked on the other side of the road. I couldn't make out anything but the outline in the fog. But Kathy knew who it was. Did she tell you? No, she just said... Oh, so we came after all. And when I asked if she wanted to get out and talk to him, she said no. But he had to be taught he couldn't treat her like dirt. That he could stay there all night for all she cared. But, but I've been afraid to tell anyone. Oh, that could be my fault. I'm to blame for so much, trying to force a way of living upon you. I thought it was the right one. Now I see that it hasn't been right, not even for me. A useless living for the dead and there's so much else. You once asked for your life to live, David. Well, finally, it's yours. And you agree that tomorrow I must tell about that night? Of course you must. In the meantime, your mother shall be playing detective. David, look at this scribbling on the telephone pad and this number here. Does it mean anything to you? Uh, why no? What's it all about, Celia? It's a number Kathy wrote on the pad. I don't know what it's about, but I'm going to find out. But how... Darling, can... Mrs. Hamilton wants to go into the village. Would you run her in, please? Yes, all right, Celia. Now. Hello? Hello? Operator, is there any way you can tell me whose number 047 is? There isn't. Well, would you give me that number, please? Yes, 047. Hello? Is Mrs. Johnson there? Why, what number is this, please? Hello? Hello? Oh, no. No. Mr. Granger, will you want anything more tonight? No, thank you, Dora. Do you think your mother would? No, I don't think so. Go to bed if you want to. Well, I didn't get much sleep last night. Worried about the murderer, Nora? Any ideas who it might be? No. But I knew nothing about either of the people who were killed. I suppose the murderer could be any one of us. People are so seldom what they seem, even you. You appear young and timid and so very appealing, but I wonder, couldn't that too be a disguise? Some sort of shabby deception? Then you've known about me. A letter came from the employment agency yesterday, saying they were sorry they hadn't been able to send anyone. For what the devil are you? A policewoman? Someone from a newspaper? Oh, just someone desperate, that's all. I was at the agency when they were interviewing people. Miss Harper said I was too young. I was so anxious to get away from the city, I decided just to come anyway to protect... Why were you so anxious to get away? A man? I didn't want to see him anymore. And he wouldn't leave me alone. Oh, it was my fault. I pretended I liked him. I'd been in that orphanage, as I told you. Then one dreary job after another. I sought a little security, some comfort and affection to be worth... I'll tell your mother in the morning. Then I'll clear out. Nora. Yes? Talk to mother in the morning, but I don't believe there'll be any question of your leaving, if you still want to stay. Oh, I still want to stay. Good. Perhaps we can make up to you for some of the bad things you've had in your life. Look, uh, I have to go to the village and pick up Mrs. Hamilton. How about coming along for the ride, eh? Should we leave your mother alone? Oh, there's a policeman at the gate and we'll be right back. Well, you're good to get out of the house. Yes, 
I'd very much like to go. Good, then go and get your coat. Yes. I'll meet you at the garage. I'll go on down. David? David? Oh. David, is that you? No, it's me. I thought I heard a car. Well, not mine. I parked it down the road a bit. I wanted to walk, look around the grounds. You're looking very lovely tonight. Thank you. The crowd's been bothering you today? There were people down by the gate. They only went when it got dark. I could sense their hostility. I've become a witch in a castle. And they think I did it. Well, next time your chauffeur gets murdered, see that you're a few miles away from the crime, not just a few feet. Not very lucky in our murders, are we? How extraordinary that Kathy left no address book, no letter. There was nothing. I went to her room myself. Kathy did leave something. Oh? She'd known someone in the village. Someone in particular. So far, he hasn't volunteered to identify himself. That's why I think he's guilty. He has a telephone. Kathy calls him often. But how can we trace her call? Very simple. You see, I have the number. She had a habit of scribbling while she used the phone in here. Among her scribbling, there was a number repeated. Could be just the grocery store. No, besides, in addition to the number, she wrote a name. That makes it easier. Yes, I guess you do have something, Mrs. Granger. May I see the scribbling? Here's the pad. Thank you. You should have looked at it before you threw it on the fire. I know what it said. I lied. There was no name. It wouldn't have mattered, as long as the number was there. I figured something was up when you phoned earlier. I recognized your voice. Why did you do it? Kathy tried to latch onto me. She wanted security, respectability, and I was to be the fall guy. She knew I was ambitious and thought she'd go along for the ride. She told me about the baby. Said if she had to, she could prove it was mine if I didn't marry her. But kidding her. I wasn't going through a life with her tied on my neck. But when I got this far, what place did she have in my scheme of things? When you told me about your ambitions, I never dreamed you were... Crazy? Go and say it. I don't mind. Because I'm not crazy. There's one straight line I'm following right up out of the gutter. I'm knocking down that wall I told you about. And Marino. Why did you kill him? Evidently he'd been playing around with her too. He went to her room that morning before we got here. She did keep a diary. My name wasn't mentioned, just an initial. We found something I'd forgotten about, a snapshot taken in an amusement park the first night I'd gone out with her. So he tried to blackmail you, too. He hadn't met for town the other afternoon. When I found him in the garage and told him I was taking him in, he played his ace. I stabbed him with the shears. They deserved what they got, both of them. How could you possibly expect to get away with this? You knew something would turn up, something that would destroy you, your ambition. It hasn't destroyed me, nothing can. How can you avoid it? By doing what I don't want to do. What has to be done? Don't be ridiculous. Oh, if only things had worked out for this. If only David! Not... David! Your son's not here. Nora! The maid's not here either. She went out a while ago with your son. That was the car you heard. I was outside, waiting. We're all alone. The policeman at the gate. He knows you're here. No, he doesn't. I came by the path of the cliff. No! No, no you don't. There was a place for you in my scheme of things. It could have been so right, you and me. I needed you. I've always needed you. But you're not the one listening. You don't care anything about me. Celia, I've always loved you. Another setting stone. Oh, don't you see? You've been part of the dream. Dream? Yes, I've been in a dream, too. But I'm facing reality now, thanks to you. You had me fooled as you fooled everyone else. The self-made man with his rugged charm, his simple honesty, his strength. So different from any man I'd ever known. Yes, Mr. Carlin. I think you should know. I was beginning to find you very attractive. I love you. You've got to believe me. If that. you do, prove it. Go away. Give yourself up. No, I'll never do that. I can't now. I am strong with the strength to see this through. I'm playing it the same. All or nothing. Like it's always been. I tell you, your luck's run out. Don't, don't be a fool. You'll never get away with it. I you... can't stop now. I've gone too far to stop. Help! Don't scream. Please, don't scream. It won't take long. <laughs> If you love me, how can you do this? Because now you're just like them. You're in my way. Celia! Celia! Are you all right? David! 
You see, it is too late. All right, Charlie, all right. You better go quietly. Your policeman's all set to take you. No, thanks. I'm going another way. Colin, stay where you are. Don't run upstairs. It won't help. All or nothing. <coughs> Steady, Nora. Oh, that window above the cliff. Celia. Celia, are you all right? Yes, David. I'm all right. All or nothing. So ends our Caltech's play, Detectives Are Not Always Right. In a moment, we will give you tonight's cast and tell you about next Sunday's Caltech's play. Enjoy all the power and performance benefits your car has to offer. Fill your tank with Super Caltech's gasoline and change the oil to RPM 1030 Special. You'll hear and feel an immediate improvement. Yes, from the moment you touch the starter, you'll know why this grand team is acclaimed as the greatest gasoline motor oil combination on the road. Super Caltex and RPM 1030 Special are the result of a special refining and blending process. And because they work in complete harmony, they ensure greater engine efficiency no matter what the conditions may be. Before you leave on your holiday tour or picnic trips, see a Caltex dealer. And wherever your travels, Watch for the famous Caltech star, because there you will find the men and the products that take better care of cars. Ladies and gentlemen, the producer of tonight's Caltech's play, E. Mason Wood. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Detectives Are Not Always Right was adapted for radio by Richard Lane from the play Celia, written by George Batson. In the starring role you heard... I was Celia Granger. This was Queenie Ashton. <laughs> the supporting roles in this play were as follows. David Granger was played by Roger Climpson. Dan Carlin, the detective... Kenneth Warren, Martha Brand, Sheila Stewart, Louisa Cortland, Rita Pornsford, Kathy, Amber May Cecil, Marino, Ken Wayne, Mrs. Hamilton, Ruth Cracknell, Laura Taylor, Pat Crocker. Thank you, Mr. Wood. Next Sunday night in the Caltech Theatre, you will hear the ribald comedy success, It's Different for Men, the saucy story of two schoolmasters who are rivals for the headmastership of a co-educational school. The result of the contest brings unexpected complications and the situation becomes hilarious. Be listening to For Smiling Through and Three Men on a Horse, outstanding future productions in the Caltech Theatre. Now, this is your compere, Rick Hutton, bidding you good night on behalf of your hosts, Caltex Oil, marketers of Super Caltex and Caltex gasolines, the world famous RPM 1030 Special Motor Oil, and Marfac chassis lubrication.